Today's topic is how to do dating and how to do dating teaching and counseling. So first there is uh, a teaching on people who uh, actually on any young people. Uh, it doesn't even have to be teenagers, even children. Uh, part of it should be, ed uh, you know, some of the teaching, especially about sex, should be given to them, even to children, so that they will not uh, commit fornication even uh, being a child or uh, when they are being sexually abused by people that they know that this is a sin so uh, today you know part of it you select which part you do uh, do it for education for children and which part you do it for youths um, so this is different let me check everything okay so um this is very important topic, uh, especially when I realize that there's a lot of uh, fornication going on with young people all over the world. That a lot of people think that having sex is, is fun and they didn't realize that this would destroy the relationship with God and also it would destroy, uh, their, uh, it can ruin their future marriage. Um, Okay, let me see. Um, okay, is it? Okay, now I'm going to, sorry, there was some problem here. Okay, now first we're going to talk about uh, general differences between male and female first. Now these first few slides are similar, are the same uh, as uh, marriage counseling, but and then the second part will be totally different. Okay, now difference between male and female is very important for all people to understand because um, it will affect it will affect people on how they relate to people of the opposite sex. Okay, so first male they're usually interested in action, and female are more interested in family and relationship. That. Um, that uh, they want to uh, uh, like communicate and talk and build up relationship and uh, and then build up the family and then males are more interested in work and what they do in the projects uh, in uh, even in a relationship even in marriage they're more interested in having fun rather than taking up the responsibilities of the whole family. Now many men might say well I have strong responsibilities for my family but compared to women, women have a much stronger sense of responsibilities so that uh, so women generally re remember all the needs of the children uh, and the emotions of the children. Okay and male don't like to talk about feelings uh, and then very often they neglect the feeling and they don't know the feelings and then women have to talk about feelings they they uh, want to talk about uh, how they're feeling uh, like if they're unhappy if they are uh, sad about something if they're angry they want to talk about it and then males have to learn before they can love it's generally women have a natural tendency to love uh, their family members love the children, love the husband, and husbands generally it's harder for uh, husbands to love the wife. Now he might like the wife. Liking the wife is different from loving. Loving is means means caring for her, want to do uh, uh, things that would please her, make her happy, and uh, do things to to bless her. Uh, generally, men are more interested in having sex or uh, just doing his work and, and they, uh, generally men don't want to talk much. Okay, and then um, women generally are willing to love and want to be loved. They want to be loved and they need to be loved. And then for men, very often they uh, you know, it's not the most important need that they express. They don't generally say, uh, you know, they, uh, do you love me? 
The husband doesn't usually ask the wife, do you love me? But the wife would very often ask the husband, do you love me? And then the men generally can forget family responsibilities easily. And then women have stronger responsibility toward the family. And then males don't want to be nagged and female nagged easily. So these are some general differences. And, and, and that is why uh, for many women, when they get married, they want to get, have love and have care and they want to talk about their feelings and they want to talk about their needs. So that's the general um, uh, intention, desire of the women. And then for men, for a man, when he gets married, he thinks, you, know, you know, I come home, I, I take care of the family, that's already love. So many men don't want to talk about their feelings, don't want to talk about how much they love the wife, and don't want to listen to the wife uh, that he, you know, if the wife keep talking about her needs and problems, then the, the man generally doesn't want to listen that much. And um, also, it's a tendency for men to look at marriage as, you know, dating as a, a, a time that they try to uh, chase after a girl and marry that girl. It's like a project. But for women, generally, they see dating as a time that they, they uh, really find a husband that loves her. And uh, so, for the wife, generally, it's very strong desire to find a husband to love her. And then for a, for a husband, he wants to find a wife that pleases him and, uh, and doesn't nag and is nice to him and respect him and wants to have sex with him. So it's generally that way. Now let's look, go back to the picture here. This picture here is about the difference with differences between male and female. For the male, you see here three times sex. So for men, it's very, uh, men have a stronger tendency to have sex. They want to have food and TV and beer and football. So activities, fun time. And then for women, they're interested in babies. Generally, men are not so much interested in, in babies, even though you know, they will, um, excuse me, let me, uh, I mean, they will accept that they have babies, but then that's not the most important desire. Let me, let me fix something here. I'm sorry. Excuse me. So uh, women are interested in babies to talk and they want to be respected and they want love and security and also shoes. Uh, now it might not be very true in Africa but in many countries many women have many shoes. And many men don't understand why women, women want to have so many shoes because they want to have shoes that match the clothing. It might not be true in Africa, but it's true in many countries. Okay, now people hurt easily, each other easily in families. It's, it's a fact. Why do many marriages break down? Because they hurt each other easily. Because many people don't have strong love for each other and sometimes even have no love. Uh, and I want to say this, married men, think about you know, your wife. Do you have strong love toward her or you think that she is you know, uh, making you feel unhappy, she's nagging you and is uh, pressure in the relationship with the wife? Uh, many men find that you know, after they get married, they. Uh, because they don't listen to the wife and so the wife complains more and then gradually he will lose the love for the wife. 
and then they yell at each other easily and criticize and nag and and then they when they see something that they are, they don't like then they uh, then they yell at each other and criticize each other and nag and this is very destructive to the relationship and three they don't communicate much or listen when they communicate they just want the other person to listen they just want to say what they want to say and they don't want to listen to the other person four they don't appreciate uh, each other and then take things for granted and then five neglect they neglect each other neglect each other's needs and six they get emotional get angry or depressed so uh, very often in marriage people get emotional very easily get frustrated and then seven force people to change or do things so force the the spouse to change they want the, the spouse to change to meet their needs and number eight want the other person to disappear when they don't like the other person so this happens to many marriages and uh, so before people get married they should understand all these problems so that they can build up a strong marriage because marriage is very important uh, if a person has a terrible marriage he cannot have a strong relationship with God because he will be affected by the family all the time and then if he's a minister and he, if he has problem with the wife then he would lose his motivation to serve God and he would lose his joy and he would lose strength so it's very important for us if we want to live a full Christian life and abundant Christian life we want to build up the marriage so that the marriage is very healthy and if you do a survey on many married couples from 1 to 10 1 would be they just you know they're unhappy with the spouse they just bear with them and then 10 would be they are very happy they they are satisfied with the family and the spouse and you ask them from 1 to 10 uh, and you know if they're not under pressure to tell who they are and they just fill in 1 to 10 you'll be surprised how many people uh, don't have a happy marriage it's a fact in uh, all over the world okay and then people follow the sinful nature easily why do families have problem because people follow the sinful nature and number one they react to each other the way they treat us so when they yell at us then we have a tendency to yell back at them when they are unhappy we have a tendency to be unhappy and just want to get what we want to get just want to get something get the care and the love and the help and don't want to give and then self-centered just think of ourselves our needs our want and four don't think of the feelings and needs of the other person and just think about what they should do uh, and number five follow the internal impulses they just uh, they want to do something they, they uh, so they're driven by the desires number six want to have intimate body contact and sex just for satisfaction now for people dating very often uh, many men have a stronger tendency they just want to have intimate body contact and to have sex just for satisfaction not for commitment it's very important to understand that many men they date and they want to have sex sex is not a sign of love that when a man want to have sex with a woman doesn't mean that he really loves her he just want to have sex and and uh, be satisfied and so uh, this is their sinful nature and number seven people can switch partners easily when they find another date so if they find a person who can whom they like they might want to switch partners okay now why is it important to do dating teaching and counseling because people don't understand the differences between male and female and men need to learn to love care listen respond communicate and take up responsibilities and women need to learn to guide men to communicate and care so because male and females don't understand uh, the opposite sex and and if they don't understand men would regard women as men they would think that uh, that uh, the, the woman will be like them and and not be so emotional and and be very uh, 
it's easy to convince them, but men, many men find that it's very hard to uh, convince a woman to change a woman. And so he he gets frustrated. So men need to learn to love and to care. Uh, his dating partner and listen and respond and communicate and take up responsibilities and then women need to guide men to communicate and care because many men don't know how to communicate with women in Chinese we have this saying the woman's heart is like the, a needle in the bottom of the sea now if you drop a needle into the sea it's very hard to find it and many men say that it's very hard to understand women because they don't know why the women get angry, get unhappy. They don't understand that. And so they say the woman's heart is like a needle in the bottom of the sea. So the women need to communicate with the man and tell him, I like you to do this. I like you to listen to me. I like you to understand me. I want to tell you how I feel. Now many women like the man, like the man to understand her. She wants him to understand her automatically, but that doesn't happen easily. Most men don't understand women. So women has have to guide the man to understand her, to understand her feelings, why she behaves like that, why she's unhappy and what she wants and how she wants uh, uh, the man to to talk to her and then two men and women behave differently after they get married now this is very important to understand women might pressure the man to take up responsibility and to communicate and might nag and many men lose the motivation to please the wife after the marriage now this is very important to understand now many women don't understand why did the man chase after them why did the man chase after them during dating but after marriage it seems that he has lost all interest to please her why is that so the reason is because many men think of dating as a period of time to to finish a project they want to find a wife find find a wife and to to love him and and I want to say honestly to someone to have sex and after he finds a wife he thinks that his job is done and so after marriage he would say well I come home to eat and to sleep I work I earn money for the family I have done my responsibilities they think that is all but women look for love they look for someone to listen to her and understand her and care about her and men are not used to that because men don't do that they don't express love and care and communicate they don't do that and and why did they do it in dating they want to do it in dating because they want to get the girl it's a project uh, it's like they want to accomplish something they want to uh, find a wife so they would use all the method to please the girl and also because before dating usually the girls don't nag that much because uh, before marriage uh, she doesn't need him to do house chores and do a lot of things and they just have a good time talking to each other so the men think that now I get a girl who likes to have fun but after marriage they find that the wife now wants to you know wants him to listen and to care about her and to take up responsibilities and if the man doesn't do it the woman gets frustrated and angry and will nag the man and so the man then doesn't understand why does she change so much before marriage she, she is so lovely and so happy so you see girls they they don't have a strong sense of responsibility for the family yet and so they just relax and have fun and then when they date they will you know they have fun with the uh, with the husband uh, with a uh, boyfriend and and um, uh, most men want the wife to to be like that after marriage they want the wife not to nag and not to request so much but it's true that after marriage 
the woman takes up the responsibility and she need the things at home need to be done and she she has a need to uh, to talk about her feelings and her needs and things she's unhappy about and so she would talk more seriously before marriage she would be you know talking uh, with fun but after marriage she start to talk about her needs and her feelings and then the men uh, have not been educated about this need of the woman and so she, he doesn't want to you know he finds that the, the wife changed totally after marriage and then the woman find that the man doesn't listen to her anymore doesn't want to talk anymore doesn't care about her anymore doesn't wait for her anymore but before marriage he would wait for her and be very nice to her so uh, so both the husband and wife change after marriage and many men uh, now here women uh, number two women might pressure the man to take up responsibility and to communicate and might nag and the married man lose many men lose motivation to please the wife after marriage because they have finished the job of finding a wife already and three many men want to have sex soon after dating and this will create many problems because uh, they need education and many men think that if I have sex with a woman I gain something and they you know all the time when they date they would be thinking about how to be able to touch her body kiss her hug her and have sex that's what is in most men's mind so Christian men need to be educated if they just look for sex what happened is they have premarital sex and it would it's it can uh, hurt the relationship with God and God is not happy with that and also there's a chance that he might not find this woman to be his wife and then and then he leaves the woman then it's a serious sin because he has committed uh, fornication with the woman and then leave her and also if there is premarital pregnancy it's create problem and so it will affect both persons so when a man have sex with a woman before marriage he also loses a lot of things he loses his relationship with God loses his uh, reputation lose a uh, clear conscience so it's very important that men need to understand that when they have pure marital sex they don't earn something they lose a lot of things and and it would create many problem and especially when the girls get pregnant and it will force them to get married or the man would leave the woman and it create more problem and would affect the relationship with God okay number four many people don't realize that they have to handle different problems after marriage uh, many people think that they get married and then they are happy e ever after that's not true you know many stories is like that you know when a prince find a princess and then they get married and then they are happy ever after that's not true because they need to handle different problems now spiritual problems and differences so the husband and wife might not have the same spiritual level and uh, after marriage they find out that the other person is not so spiritual doesn't love God so much doesn't respect God so much doesn't obey God so much and it will create problem and then or find out that the other person have really a, a problem with relating to God and then dividing the house chores now many men have a tendency to say women do all the house chores and then the men just go out and work now this is unfair because uh, the woman has a lot to do at home and also sharing the chores would uh, show the, wi the wife that the husband loves her that he doesn't just leave the wife to do all the work at home so husband should share house chores and then uh, responsibilities for the family so after marriage they find out you know the wife might find out that the husband doesn't uh, care about the family that much and it could create problem and then different habits like uh, uh, when to sleep when to wake up how to talk to each other 
how to uh, cook, what kind of food to eat. Uh, there are all kinds of habits, how they pray, how they relate to God, all different. And then in-laws problem, in-law problems that the, uh, the in-laws might give pressure to them and it will create other problems. And then financial problems uh, that they uh, need to support the family and then they have problems supporting the family and then it will create problems. Okay, and then value system that one person might value uh, spiritual life, might value praying, worshipping, and the other person value money and fun and, uh, and also how to talk to people, how to relate to people. And both persons, uh, each person might be different in how they relate to people, how they, what they see as important. One person might see that caring for other people is very important, evangelism is very important, uh, serving God is very important, but the other person might, might not have that value. And also communication problems that they, uh, when they're unhappy, they just, uh, they just complain and they get frustrated. And uh, also they uh, don't listen and they don't know the feelings and they, so they cannot respond to the other people's, other person's feeling and cannot share about their own feelings. And problem solving ability. So many young people don't know how to solve problems. When there are problems, they will run away or they will get angry, they get frustrated. So people need to learn to, when they face problems, they need to calm down and then pray and then ask God how to solve a problem instead of complaining to, to the other person. Many people use complaining as a way to solve problems. Number five, it is better to prevent problems than to solve the problems after they come. It is better that people learn to prevent problems in marriage. So it's better that both persons are ready. They understand the differences between the sexes and they understand how to communicate and how to talk about different problems, how to handle different problems. And then they learn to solve different problems before marriage. Then after they get married, then they already know how to handle the problems. And they know when to ask for help. But if a couple doesn't understand the differences at all, and then they get married, and then the, suddenly the men find out that the woman, now he, she used to have so much fun and just talk in a happy way, and now she complains and she wants things done, and she talks about her feelings, and then the man is not used to it, and then he gets frustrated, and then the wife finds that the, the husband doesn't have love for her anymore. So they face all these problems suddenly and, and then they uh, very quickly they will uh, they, uh, they lose interest in the marriage and it will uh, destroy the marriage. So it's better to prevent problems that they learn how to relate to each other, how to handle problems. So it's very important before marriage that they learn to communicate about different problems, how to talk about different things and solve the problem and how to have love for each other that really love and care, want to do the good things to the other person. Many people after marriage, they still don't love each other. They don't want to do, they don't think of doing something good to the other person. They just think of, uh, they just think of, um, Okay, we're already broadcasting. Some people don't know. So, um, so many people are not prepared for marriage, and then they find the problems, and then they, and then they, uh, and then they get frustrated, and that it could affect affect the the relationship. Okay, number six. Family problem will affect the relationship with God and the spiritual life. So, if a person is unhappy at home every day. Now, before they get married, they can praise God, love God, and it's no burden. And it, it's easier to have peace and love in God. And, but after marriage, if there is yelling at home, fighting, and always struggling, and problem of communication, then it's very hard to, to uh, have a strong spiritual life. So it's very important 
if we want to build up our spiritual life, it's very imp important to build up our relationship with people. We want to love people, care about their feelings, care about their needs, and then build up the marriage and build up relationship with all people. And number seven, Satan wants to attack the church through family problems. Now, Satan has successfully destroyed many people, many Christians' marriage, and that affects the relationship with God. Now, Jesus had told us not to have divorce, but it's true that in many countries, in many countries that there is problem of, uh, of divorce, that many Christians divorce. It's not right, but it's true that it has happened. Okay, let me see what's... Uh, Okay, now B is most crucial to follow God's plan in dating and marriage. Now it's very important, dating is a time to find God's will. Now it's not true that when a Christian man finds a Christian woman, then they should get married. They should marry the person that God has prepared for them. God has a wonderful plan in our life, so we want to find God's will. Uh, Psalm 139, 16, the days fashioned for me, uh, when yet as yet there were none of them, how precious also are your thoughts to me, O God, how great is the sum of them. So all the days, uh, all the days of our life has been written in your book. And so, uh, so how precious are God's thoughts for me, that he has written for me, all the days prepare for me. So all the days. Now, if God has a wonderful plan for our lives, uh, so if God has a plan for our whole life, He would also have a plan for our marriage. God has a wonderful plan for our lives, including our spouse and how we relate to our spouse. So He, um, He has a plan for our marriage, for our spouse, so we want to find God's will. Okay, number three, if we seek God's will in the choice of our spouse and in how we relate to our spouse, we will be blessed in our whole life. If people follow lust and their selfish desires in choosing a date and in marriage life, they would divert from God's plan. So if we seek God's will in a choice of our spouse, in whom you know we seek God, who, whom God has prepared for us, and in how we relate to our spouse, how, um, how, how we love and listen to our spouse and care about him and her and relate to them and help each other. So we should follow God's will to find the spouse and also to relate to our spouse. Then we'll be blessed in our whole life. It should be L-I-F-E. If people follow lust and their selfish desire in choosing a date, now many men, they just look for a sexy woman, a beautiful woman, and then they want to have sex with her. Now this is not the purpose of Christian dating. and It would destroy the life of the woman if he just want to have sex and then leave her, and even if he has sex and then they marry later, it's still not God's will. It would, uh, it would take away the clear conscience that they don't have a peaceful heart in the dating period and in the marriage. It will, it will harm the marriage. So it's very important that then in the dating, if they just follow lust and selfish desire, they. Uh, in choosing a date, then they would divert from God's plan. They would lose God's plan. Now it's very important <coughs> for Christian men and women to understand that too. That uh, you know, a believer and a non-Christian non is not fit to be paired up. That the Bible says that very clearly. That we are not fit to pair up with a non-Christian. Now I know that in many countries there is a pressure to get married. 
Uh, many people will say, I find uh, someone to marry and they are very happy. But we should first look for a, actually we should not look for a, a person we date because God will plan that. God has a plan. What we want to do is to seek God and also be nice to everyone. And then God will open the way. Now, it's both parts. First, we love God and follow God and wait for God's guidance. And then at the same time, we uh, uh, fulfill our responsibilities as a Christian. We love God, we love people, we care about people. And then God will draw the person God has prepared for us uh, to us. He will draw the people together that they have feelings toward each other. And then when we have feelings toward uh, someone, then we want to pray to God to guide us. And it's very important that if we don't find a Christian to marry, we should not marry. Now, I know that in many countries that is not, people are not following that. But the Bible does say very clearly that, uh, that we should only marry Christians. Okay, let me... Um, that Christians should only marry Christians, okay? So all Christians should seek God's guidance in dating. They should not just date anyone. They should put down their selfish desires and seek God's will diligently. Because when we follow God's will, then God has a plan in the life and, they, and God will prepare the right person for us that will fulfill God's plan. Now, when we have this person, it doesn't mean that we can do anything to her. We still want to love her care about her and build up the marriage and then number five if people date for wrong reasons they will suffer for their whole life marriage affects our life more than many other factors okay now I use an illustration a man finds a beautiful woman and he thinks well this woman is very attractive very sexy and then he thinks, if I get this woman, I have everything in the whole world. And then, and then he, you know, that's not the woman God has prepared for him. That means they are not fit for each other. And then after marriage, they will, you know, find more and more problems. And especially if the person has not learned how to uh, love the spouse, and then they have more and more problems. And then it would destroy the whole marriage and the whole life. Even though this woman she wants to marry was a pretty and sexy woman. It doesn't guarantee a happy marriage. We want to f uh, follow God's will and also follow God's way of relating to our spouse before we can have a uh, fulfilled marriage, a, a godly family. Okay, so if they just want to chase after someone who has money, uh, they just want to chase after someone because uh, they feel they have low self-image. So if I find anyone, I'll marry the person. They didn't realize that this person might have a lot of emotional problem. Uh, they have a lot of uh, problems of sin. So when we seek God's will, we want to find out about the other person. How does the person handle his or her emotions. How does he handle his sins and his problem in life? How is his Christian life? How does he relate to people? And all these things we want to find out before we want to commit to that person. Six, some wrong reasons for dating. That people date for wrong reasons. Sexual desire. They want to have sex uh, with anyone. And just attracted by appearance. By the look and decide to be comforted. Some people are very lonely and unhappy. They just want someone to comfort him or her. And if they find someone who is willing to comfort him and her, then he's very happy. Then he is, um, then he thinks that, okay, that's the person I want to marry. Now, that might not be the right person. And then, uh, low self-image. They, th you know, they think that they, they are nobody, uh, they cannot find someone that's suitable for them. They just find anyone that uh, they can see. And because of the low self-image, they have no confidence. They have no confidence to f find the right person. Okay, and then desire financial benefit. Some people just want to marry someone who has money. Oh, he has a car. He has 
a house. I want to marry that person so that I will have money. But sometimes rich people can have a lot of problems in their life. So we don't just look for money and decide to move away from one's family. Sometimes uh, a person's parents are not nice. They, uh, they're mistreating the child. So when the child grows up, he wants to get married and move away from the family. And these are all wrong reasons to get married. Okay, number seven. People easily lose the judgment when they are attracted by, to date someone. They might neglect all the problems of the other person. Now, this is very true. Uh, this happens all over the world. When someone are uh, attracted to date someone, they, when they see a... Uh, someone they like, they forget about everything. They don't pay attention to this person's behavior, his way of thinking, his way of relating to people. They just say, I find someone who loves me. And then they, they think that that solves all the problem. Now, before marriage, as I said before, the, the man have a strong tendency to please the woman because he wants to uh, find a, a, a date or find a uh, a wife so he he tries all his ways to please the woman and a woman wants to please the man too that he she wants to find a husband so she trying to please the man and then they don't find out about each person's uh, uh, his condition and, and situation and his uh, personality and and then they lose the ability to judge even when they find that the other person has serious problems now, in uh, one of the churches I served before, there was a young man who is dating a girl, and he brought the girl to the church. And this girl doesn't relate to anyone. She doesn't talk to anyone. And everyone in the church t told him, this girl has problem. Don't continue to date her. You have to... Uh, separate from her and stop the uh, dating relationship and, uh, and and the guy agrees also he agrees yes but then he said she said if I leave her she will commit suicide and he dare not leave her and then they continue relationship for years after you know after I left the church I told I told him you know uh, actually it this happened after I left the church that I already came to Hong Kong, came back to Hong Kong, and I found out uh, this situation. And I, I, I told the guy that if, you know, the girl, many people find the girl has problem, and you have found problems with this girl too. And he said, yes, I found problems with her, but I don't know how to say no. And, you know, what we want to say is, if you find that the person is not the right person, we, he has to stop, but had to stop it gently and say, uh, I find that uh, we're not fit for each other and uh, we are not chosen by God to be together. It's better that we separate now instead of staying longer and then suffer more. And I want to bless you and I, I'm willing to do anything to help you to, you know, to go through this period with peace. Now, when we separate from someone, we want to leave the person in peace and in a loving manner. We want to say nice things to the person and not to hurt the person, but just to say uh, that we're not right for each other and that is not God's will. So I hope that we all have that wisdom to do that. That's very important, <coughs> very important to, <coughs> to be able to say no <coughs> to the other person when we find that the relationship is not right is not pleasing to God then we have to separate to prevent more problems because if the person get married or if uh, they have sex and then they find it very hard to separate you know because after the person has sex is he should not leave the girl so we should not have sex first we should seek God's will one reason why people should not have sex in dating is that one day they find out more problems about their person and they don't want they want to separate from each other then they if they have sex then 
uh, in Jesus, they already are one in Christ. So it's, uh, it creates many, many problems. Okay? And then, um, so they might lose the judgment when they are attracted to their person. So we don't want to be drawn by romance, drawn by attraction. But we want to be, you know, have a clear mind and be calm in the relationship and seek God's will to build up the relationship and not to just, uh, uh, you know, put in all the feelings and romance and commitment right at the beginning. We don't want to do that. In a dating period, it's not a time of commitment to marriage. It's a commitment to find out about each other. And then if they're not fit for each other, then they should separate in God's name and it's good to find a pastor to pray for them to bless them each of them uh, so that they can separate and be happy with each other and bless each other and they are from the if they are from the same church they can see each other with good feelings so it's good to find a pastor to pray for them both and to counsel them when they uh, need to separate from each other so when people lose judgment they might neglect all the problems of the other person and number eight, one should seek God's will by these methods. First, praying with a heart to obey God. Now, some people, when they see someone, they're attracted to the person, they will pray like this, God, I really want this person. Please make this person, uh, make her become my wife. I really want her. So she or he already make up his mind. Then he's not asking God's will. We should have the heart to say, if it's God's will, please accomplish it Lord if it's not your will please stop it as soon as possible please let me know as soon as possible so that I will stop the relationship so people should find God's will immediately instead of going into a romantic relationship at the beginning and then uh, paying attention to how God guides us in different ways so uh, so God might guide us through a pastor through another Christian and through the relationship with each other that when we talk with the other person you find that the person really have problem really doesn't know how to understand how to listen how to care then people should not get married with someone who doesn't care about him or her at all so we should pray to God all day long and all the time and, and pay attention to how God is guiding us See as a pastor or wise leader to guide oneself and give opinions. Now many people think, well, dating is a very private, private thing. It's my relationship with this girl. I don't want anyone to know about it. I don't want the pastor to interfere. Now it's very important for a mature person who understands marriage to help because uh, when a pastor is more experienced in life, when a mature and wise leader has more experience in life, they have more experience to know uh, uh, to to know whether this person, you know, they they uh, match each other. So uh, we should ask for guidance. Don't you know? We should put down the thinking that uh, dating is totally private, and some people they just keep the dating secret until they get married and they suddenly tell everyone I'm gonna get married next week and then it's too late but I always tell people it's not too late even one minute before marriage you find that the person really have serious problem uh, then people should stop the wedding and if they have some problem but not as serious as that they should still postpone them the wedding and find out really if they are suitable for each other. It's better to stop the marriage even one minute before the marriage before they get uh, instead of getting married and then suffer for the whole lifetime. Now many people suffer because they haven't found the person God has chosen for them. Okay and then D observing how one state relate to oneself and how one state resolve problems with oneself. So one way to find out God's will is see how the person relate to us. If the person doesn't, you know, uh, have love, doesn't care, doesn't know how to talk, then we should work on it, work on it, and 
so that we can learn to communicate and not to yell at each other and criticize each other and how to build up with positive communication and to find out if they are suitable for each other. Uh, so when we observe the other person, how he relate to us and how he relate to other people. If a person relate to us very well but relate to other people in a very terrible way, then we should reconsider the relationship. Now one day, uh, in uh, many years of, uh, before, uh, before now, I, one day I saw, saw a man, a young man and a woman hugging each other. And a man was holding a cell phone and calling uh, his family. Now how do I know, how did I know that he was calling a family? Because the way he talks, uh, he was saying, Oh, uh, I'll come home soon. Don't, don't ask me questions. You know, the way I, he talks, I know that he was talking to his family member. But he was very patient. And the girl looked at him with a smile because she thinks that now the guy wants to have time for me and he doesn't want to go home right away. But she did not pay attention that the guy was talking very impolitely with his family member that he was very rough with his family member. Even though he was very nice with the girl, but very soon after marriage, he would treat the girl the same way as he treats his family members. I hope we understand this. If a person treats his family member in a very rough way, he will treat the spouse in the same way after marriage also. Because now he's chasing after her, so he's very happy with her. So after he finished the phone call, he will be having fun with the girl. And the girl thinks, now he loves me very much and I'm very happy to have her, have him. But after marriage, she will be totally disappointed because he will treat her the same way. So we want to observe how the other person relates to other people, how he helps people, how he helps the church, how he, whether he is polite to other people, whether he has love for people. These are all very important uh, characteristics of a person that, uh, to, that he can have a good marriage. Okay? How sex affects dating and marriage is very important for us to understand.